between the way in which most human beings experience their own existence and the way man's being and nature is described in the sciences. I was pointing out that in such sciences as ecology and biology, the way in which they describe human, animal and insect behavior is in flat contradiction with the way in which most of us experience our thinking and our action and our existence. We have been brought up to experience ourselves as isolated centers of awareness and action placed in a world that is not us, that is foreign, alien, other, which we confront. Whereas in fact, the way an ecologist describes human behavior is as an action, what you do is what the whole universe is doing at the place you call here and now. You are something the whole universe is doing in the same way that a wave is something that the whole ocean is doing. Because if we don't experience ourselves that way, we mistreat our environment. We treat it as an enemy. We try to beat it into submission. And if we do that, comes disaster. We exploit the world we live in. We don't treat it with love and gentleness and respect. We cut down millions of acres of forests to turn it into newspaper of all things. Lovely trees turned into information about nothing. We kick the world around in revenge for feeling that really we are puppets which the world kicks around. So my main point last night was then that we need a new kind of consciousness in which every individual becomes aware that his real self is not just his conscious ego. You know, let's take a headlight of a car. The headlight shines on the road in front. The headlight does not shine on the wire which connects it with its own battery. So in a way, the headlight is unaware of how it shines. And in the same way, we are unaware of the sources of our consciousness. We don't know how we know. There was a young man who said, though, it seems that I know that I know. What I would like to see is the eye that knows me when I know that I know that I know. <laughs> and so we are ignorant of, we ignore. It doesn't come within the scope of our attention how it is that we manage to be conscious. How it is that we manage to grow our hair, to shape our bones, to beat our heart, and to secrete all the necessary fluids that we need from our glands. We do it, but we don't know how we do it. Because you see, underneath the superficial self, which pays attention to this and that, there is another self, more really us than I. And if you become aware of that unknown self, the more you become aware of it, the more you realize that it is inseparably connected with everything else that there is. That you are a function of this total galaxy bounded by the Milky Way and that furthermore this galaxy is a function of all other galaxies. And that vast thing that you see far off, far off, far off with telescopes and you look and look and look. One day you're going to wake up and say, why, that's me. And in knowing that, know, you see, that you never die. That 
you are the eternal thing that comes and goes, that appears now as John Jones, now as Mary Smith, now as Betty Brown, so it goes forever, ever, ever. Now then, why I've made this point as an introduction to what I want to say tonight is the problem of the relationship of man and nature. Most Westerners, whether they be Christians or non-Christians, don't trust nature. Of all things, nature is the thing least to be trusted. You must manage it. You must watch out for it. It will always go wrong if you don't watch out. You know, the goblins will get you if you don't watch out. So we're always feeling that you, you can't trust it. See, we're absolutely instilled with the idea of original sin. You can't trust nature because it comes out with weeds and insects. And above all, you can't trust human nature because if you don't hold a club over yourself, you'll go out and rape your grandmother. Now the Chinese would say, if you can't trust yourself, you can't trust anything. Because if you can't trust yourself, can you trust your mistrust of yourself? Is that well-founded? See? You're, if you can't trust yourself, you are totally mixed up. You haven't a leg to stand on, you haven't a point of departure for anything. A man of true virtue is therefore a human-hearted man. And the meaning of this is that one should, above all, trust human nature in the full recognition that it's both good and bad, that it's both loving and selfish. Now, let me give an illustration of the wisdom of this. When people fight wars, uh, I trust them if the reason for which they fight a war is to expropriate somebody else's possessions and women because they will fight a merciful war. They will not destroy the possessions and the women that they want to capture. They want to enjoy them. And that's a war based on simple, ordinary, everyday human greed. The most awful wars that are waged are the wars waged for moral principles. You are a lousy communist. You have a philosophy that is destructive to religion and to everything that we love and value and reverence and therefore we will exterminate you to the last man unless you surrender unconditionally. Such wars are ruthless beyond belief. We can blow up whole cities wipe people out because we are not greedy. We are righteous. If you are going to do something evil, do it for a plain, honest, selfish motive. Don't do it in the name of God. <laughs> because if you do, it turns you into a monster who is no longer human a sadist, a pure destroyer. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to the channel for more. It helps us immensely. Visit the link in the comments to see how you can become a member of our community and support the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.